Hi, I'm Becky Streepy from Glue and Glitter, and today we're making rich, velvety pumpkin black bean soup. Y'all, this soup makes a great entree with just a slice of crusty bread to go with it, or you can serve it as an appetizer or a side dish if you prefer. It's a rich, creamy pureed soup with hints of ginger and cardamom, and I just can't wait for you to try it. Let's cook! This soup starts with a quick saute. So add a couple of tablespoons of olive oil to your soup pot and then add two chopped red bell peppers, a cup of chopped sweet onion, and two minced cloves of garlic. Now let's talk about this for one second while we saute because there are a couple of variations. If you don't do oil, you can broth fry instead. You might need a little more than two tablespoons of broth. Just kind of keep an eye on it and add broth by the tablespoons um, if things start to look dry. You also don't have to use red bell pepper for this recipe. I love the color that red bell pepper gives this finished soup. An orange or a yellow bell pepper will also give you a nice color. You can use green bell pepper. I know they often are the cheapest bell pepper at the grocery store and they will work in this recipe, but they will give your soup kind of a brownish color that might not seem super appetizing, but the soup will still taste delicious. Once the onion turns translucent, you're ready to add the remaining ingredients to the soup pot. So throw in one can of pumpkin puree. Do not use pumpkin pie filling for this recipe. Pumpkin pie filling includes other seasonings that aren't gonna go well with this soup. Next, add one drained and rinsed can of black beans. If you don't do canned beans, that's totally fine. You can use one and three quarters of a cup of cooked black beans that you've drained and rinsed. Next, add a 13 and a half ounce can of coconut milk. I like full fat coconut milk for this recipe because I feel like it gives it the richest, creamiest results, but you can use light coconut milk if you wanna reduce the fat content. What you should not use is the carton coconut milk, the kind that you would add to like your coffee or your cereal. That coconut milk is much too thin and it won't give this soup the rich creaminess that we're going for. Next, add two cups of vegetable broth, a one inch piece of minced fresh ginger, and a teaspoon of cardamom to the pot. Now bring that to a boil and stir so that the pumpkin and if your coconut milk like mine has some solids, try to dissolve it as much as you can. And then once it reaches a boil, everything should be dissolved at this point. Slap the lid on there, reduce the heat and simmer it for 15 minutes with the lid on so that the flavors get a chance to meld. Once your simmering time is up, it's time to puree. So you have two options here. Your first option is to let the soup cool and then spoon it into an upright blender in batches and puree it until it's smooth. That works great. I don't love waiting though, so the option that I tend to go for is using my immersion blender. I love an immersion blender because you can puree hot soup right in the pot. You don't have to dirty a whole blender. The immersion blender is super easy to wash and you don't have to wait for it to cool and then heat it back up before you serve it. So if you're using your immersion blender, just stick it right in the pot and use it to puree the soup until it's completely smooth. Now you're ready to serve. So dish that soup up into your bowls. I like to top this with a drizzle of sriracha sauce and a handful of pumpkin seeds. I love the crunch that pumpkin seeds add to this dish. It's a nice contrast to that smooth, creamy soup. Throw a slice of toasted bread with vegan butter on the side and you have got yourself a meal. I hope that this video has answered all of your questions about how to make this pumpkin black bean soup. If you have any questions that I didn't address in the video, feel free to drop a comment. I'm always happy to help. And don't forget to rate and subscribe. Happy cooking.